future is, in fact, very challenging. Uh, you know, it's a. Uh, uh, but nevertheless, many people uh, are fond of speaking about the uh, future of Tibet. And uh, there are a group of people who uh, strongly believe that the future of Tibet is fully you know, dependent on the future of China. Uh, but then you know, those people also have a different opinions in terms of uh, whether you know, the rise of China would benefit more for the Tibetan people or the fall of China. And uh, there is a school of thought who believes that you know, the 21st, 21st century belongs to China and that China is going to supersede even the United States much before 2030. And also there is another group of you know, people who believe that uh, you know, China has already started declining and uh, we can see a collapse of China in the very foreseeable future. But what I believe is that even though the changes in China is definitely going to impact the future of Tibet, but what is more important and what can really make more impact to the future of Tibet is the what course of action the Tibetan people will take. What kind of you know, uh, approach would Tibetan people would take in terms of accomplishing our common goal? So that's you know, uh, my kind of understanding of uh, you know, future uh, realization of the Tibetan people. And secondly, I believe it's more to do with the determination of the Tibetan people. And uh, every one of us do agree that Tibetans are very much determined with in our resistance against injustices and the Chinese Communist regime. And we have been, over the last now more than 60 years, we have been very strongly, uh, Tibetans have proven that uh, Tibetans are not happy under the Chinese rule. We have made it very clear time and again to the Chinese leaders as, as well as to the Chinese, uh, to, to the international community. So with this kind of determination, and obviously, uh, you know, uh, uh, Robbie talked to you about the, uh, the prevailing situation inside Tibet, how Tibetans are being now uh, repressed uh, by the Chinese authorities. So we can see that it's not only the Tibetan people and the international community who consider situation in Tibet as urgent. I have heard and I have learned that even the Chinese top leaders are also considering Tibet situation as urgent and extremely important. And I was also told that the last official document signed by Hu Jintao is the document on Tibet. And similarly, the first official document signed by the new leader, Xi Jinping, is also on Tibet. So it remains has to be seen what that document contains. Is that document to do with more repression in, in, in Tibet or to Tibetan people? Or is that document is concerned about finding a solution to the Tibet problem? So what I'm saying is that when the Chinese leaders are taking this issue at a very kind of, you know, uh, important level, which means it's all to do with the determination and the you know, the approach that Tibetans have been taking over the number of years now. So uh, that's one thing. And uh, secondly, the important thing about, you know, what Tibetan people would, uh, uh, you know, uh, do about future of Tibet, I, I would say that Tibetans in the past uh, 60 years, we have invested so much on, uh, you know, modern education, so much on preservation of Tibetan culture and, you know, uh, identity. We have. Uh, invested on Tibetan democracy. So in addition to this, I would also say that His Holiness has very carefully laid uh, groundwork for future. And even in recent times, His Holiness has uh, you know, uh, uh, made two historic decisions. One is to devolve, devolving his you know, political authorities. Uh, that is simply to empower the political leadership of the Tibetan people and also to 
you know, ensure the continuity of the freedom struggle of the Tibet movement. That's one thing. And second important decision that he made was issuing a very clear statement about the next reincarnation of the Dalai Lama. So they, there is no room for manipulation you know, from the Chinese uh, you know, communist side. So having said that, now what goal the Tibetan leadership, including his holiness, is you know, hoping to achieve? That is pretty clear to the international community. We have had this five-point peace plan proposal. We have had this uh, Strasbourg proposal. We even have this uh, the, the memorandum on genuine uh, autonomy for Tibetan people, uh, so which all calls for a self-rule uh, that respect the Tibetan national identity of the Tibetan people. So only thing how to achieve that genuine autonomy status from the Chinese government is, as I said, international community pressure is something that is very important, but at the same time, support from the Chinese community, Chinese people, and determination of the Tibetan people are extremely important to achieve the common goal, that is the genuine autonomy for the Tibetan people. Thank you very much. Thank you.